Okay, so here we have the six hydraulic components for the R171 SLK Vario roof. There is in the center the pump located behind the seats inside the cabin. We have the, the pump part number 171800148. We have the front lock cylinder located in the uh, front uh, top panel of the roof. We have the left main lift cylinder located on the left side of the rollover bar. We have the left trunk lid cylinder located in the trunk way down behind the left wheel, uh, rear wheel well. And we have the right convertible uh, trunk lid cylinder located on the right side of course and the uh, right main lift cylinder located on the right side of the uh, rollover bar. The way the system works is the pump has an electric motor, reservoir filled with fluid, um, there's a solenoid on the pump, the pump motor can run in both directions, there are a bunch of internal valves and a uh, combination of in which way the uh, pump motor turns and um, how the um, solenoid is engaged, the pump will then divert fluid and pressure from uh, to the hoses that go to the individual cylinders and um, the hoses are plugged in on the bottom of the pump um, there are three hose retaining plates which each has n have numbers um, embossed or engraved on them that um, tell you where, uh, which hose to um, um, attach. Actually the numbers are not engraved in the plates, they're engraved in the pump. So for example if it says uh, hose number 31 over here then we know that is one of the hoses going to the right main lift cylinder and the same hose will have printed in red or white the same number on it. So there also is a pressure relief valve or manual actuation valve on the pump that you will uh, open if you want to manually move the top. So the pump diverts fluid to these individual cylinders that then uh, move the top or move the trunk lid or latch the uh, top as directed by the computer. Now what can go wrong in this system? Typically the first thing to fail is the front lock cylinder and um, one would be inclined to fix just that one and say I'll keep my fingers crossed and see what else happens. Um, typically, but uh, there's more to it once you add it. Um, I'll repeat this a few times in our series of videos. The smartest way to go is just tackle everything at the same time and you won't have to worry about the top again. So this front lock cylinder has actually only four seals in it. Again, simple is beautiful, but all these four seals can and will eventually fail. There is the cup-shaped rod seal uh, that the shaft slides through. That's typically the first one to fail and you'll see fluid coming out of the cylinder housing where the shaft slides in and out. There's also the piston seal on the piston that divides the upper and lower chamber, if you want to call it that, inside the cylinder. These piston seals do fail. When they fail, fragments of these seals will get into the pump and clog up the pump. They will also rob power from the um, pump any time the top moves because one end of the cylinder is always pressurized as the uh, top moves. And if you have an internal bypass at the piston seal, um, while other cylinders are supposed to move, then you actually lose pressure just by fluid circulating through the cylinder. What do we do better at top hydraulics? Well, of course we replace the cup-shaped um, rod seal with one made of better material that does not hydrolyze or oxidize as quickly, meaning it is chemically more stable. And of course we replace the piston seal with a better one, but also, very important, there are the port seals where the hoses go into the cylinder. I will uh, show you in a minute another original cylinder 
that does not have these fancy clips on here that actually get uh, put on by top hydraulics. Originally, these um, hoses are crimped into the cylinder housing and the seals where the hoses are sealing against the houses, uh, the housing, the so-called port seals, do eventually fail. So standard at top hydraulics, we put these parts into a CNC machine, machine around the crimps and uh, take out the hoses, replace the port seals with way better ones that should last at least 50 years. And then uh, we use laser cut stainless dip, uh, steel clips, uh, tap a hole into the aluminum and screw these clips on to fasten the hoses. Bear with me a minute, I will show you an original cylinder so you can see the difference. So here's an original SLK cylinder where the hoses are still crimped into the aluminum housing of the cylinder, four little dimples that keep the hose fitting in place. And again, we machine around these, pull the hose out, replace the seal with a way better one, then we put the hose back in and fasten everything with the laser cut stainless steel clips that you see here and some socket head screws. We do the same thing on the main lift cylinders. See how again we have our laser cut stainless steel clips here that fasten the hoses to the cylinder housing. It's very important to do the job right. Don't fall for gimmicks where people say, oh, you can just uh, put an O-ring um, in place of the cup seal. That'll uh, fix it. No, it won't. The um, chances are high that you're going to damage the cylinder as you take it apart. An O-ring is not made to uh, uh, be used in a uh, dynamic application where a shaft slides through it. And again, it's very important to replace the piston seals and the port seals because they will fail eventually. Now let's talk about what can fail on the pump. The pump has an electric motor, reservoir, um, rotating pistons, a somewhat complicated valve assembly, and a solenoid on it. The R171 pump is not as well made, I'm afraid, as the R170 pump. It has internal parts that will fail more easily and that simply have a limited life to them. Typically, the way these pumps fail is that you have a loss of pressure. So if your top doesn't move properly, it moves slowly or the pump sounds weird. But once you check the fluid level in the pump, it does have all the fluid it needs, then very likely your pump is bad, that it has bad internal components. And top hydraulics, as with everything we work on, we want to make it better or we wouldn't touch it. We upgrade the internal components, upgrade the internal seals, and everything goes through a um, very detailed test procedure. So we don't just go and see, oh, what might be wrong with this pump? Let's replace a part. No, we tear these pumps apart to the component level, go through every part. We know what the tolerances are, what can fail on them. We replace and upgrade parts as needed in this pump and, of course, in particular, seals and valves, which are our specialty. We always replace all the port seals, which will fail eventually. Same as on the cylinders. And um, of particular note, the oil seal to the electric motor is originally made of a fairly cheap material. If you get back pressure from the reservoir to the motor, eventually oil gets into the motor, uh, soaks the motor in oil, and the pump will fail. Top hydraulics uh, oil seal is designed to hold up to about double as much back pressure and will last a lot longer than the original one. 
The trunklet cylinders, of course, have the same kind of cup seals where the shaft slides in and out piston seal and the important port seals where the hoses go in. You see these uh, cylinders in this um, video don't have the hoses attached because the trunklet cylinders are the only cylinders in the SLK that actually have removable hoses. There are just uh, some clips on here that allow you to pull the hoses out. So you don't have to route the hoses from these cylinders back to the pump. It saves you some labor. Um, unless the hoses get cut, they uh, normally uh, remain in good shape. They are safely routed inside the car. And again, of course, we replace the port seals where the uh, hoses go in. So while normally the first parts failing in the Vario roof is either the front lock cylinder leaking or the um, pump wearing out, it would be advisable to deal with all five cylinders and the pump at the same time uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one is you don't want to have to worry about it again now that you know these parts eventually fail anyway. Second one is uh, for access to the pump you have to remove a bunch of trim. And uh, if your front lock cylinder should be leaking, then you have to get access to the pump anyway to refill the pump. The only way to refill the pump is to take it out of the car and uh, tip it up and fill it with fluid. Um, that's a bunch of labor. It's not difficult at all, but it's a little bit time consuming. So if you're a shop, you certainly don't want your customer to come back after a few months uh, saying, hey, my other cylinders are leaking, you should have warned me. And why is this costing so much more money now? Well, basically because you have to do the job of trim removal to the pump twice. And if you're a, uh, the owner of the car and you're try looking to do the job yourself, keep your eye on the ball, look at how much money you're saving getting these parts from top hydraulics at a fraction of um, what Mercedes would charge you and just keep your eye on the ball, think how much labor you're saving doing it yourself and uh, just getting it all over with in one wash in uh, like one weekend. Hope this makes sense. Thanks for listening.